add a bit more evidence to the pile by talking about something completely new, the Iron Golems, their history, and how it all plays into the wider Ancient Builder lore. Now, the Iron Golems stick out from among the many mobs in Minecraft for a good reason. First off, they're friendly, which gotta say is a good thing considering that they're among the strongest mobs in the game, beaten only by the Wither and the Ender Dragon in terms of total hit points. Note, however, when I say that they're friendly, I don't necessarily mean that they're friendly to us. Can I kill you? No! Oh, to be sure, you'll probably get along fine with most iron golems if you play nice. They'll attack hostile enemy mobs like zombies and illagers and, well, pretty much anything that isn't a neutral mob. However, their true loyalty seems to lie with the villagers first and foremost. Which means that if you attack a villager, you're no longer a friend in the eyes of the golem, and you'd better be prepared for a fight against those iron fists. However, the most interesting part of the relationship between villager and golem comes down to spawn conditions. Namely, the fact that iron golems will spawn in a village once it grows large enough, specifically once the village has more than 10 villagers and 20 beds. Now, let me be clear, it doesn't seem like this is the result of the villagers creating that iron golem. Besides the fact that nothing we see shows villagers creating golems or even suggests that they'd be able to do it, we can turn to my favorite resource, the mob bestiary, to confirm that the golems just kind of show up. Writing about the iron golems, the researcher in the book tells us, quote, it's not exactly understood how villagers summon their iron golems, but sooner or later, one is sure to appear, end quote. Again, the villagers aren't building these golems, they're being summoned. Or perhaps it would be even more accurate to say that whenever enough villagers gather, iron golems just kinda show up. All of this leaves us with a lot of questions. Where are the iron golems coming from? Why do they seem to be drawn to the village out of pretty much anywhere else in this game? The answer to these questions can be found by examining the origins of the iron golems in Minecraft. And by origins, I'm not just talking about their in-game origins, but the origin story that led to the Iron Golems being added to the game in the first place. You see, back in 2017, the development team made a post on the official Minecraft blog, which included a note from Jeb, chief creative officer for Minecraft, which said the following. We were thinking about how to get the villagers to defend themselves, since they don't have arms. The design was inspired very much by the Japanese Studio Ghibli movie with the giant, the castle in the sky. It also has this flower. We made it look like the villagers, because obviously the villagers would create a golem which would resemble themselves, end quote. Okay, so there's a lot to address there. First, and perhaps most importantly, the fact that villagers don't have arms? Okay, so obviously that's not true. While it is true that the vast majority of villager types keep their arms covered from view, we can see certain villagers like the mason and wandering traders either wearing gloves or with their hands fully exposed. So while their arms don't move, we know that they least exist. Though their arms just being big meat loops in front of their bodies would be a convenient explanation for why they seem incapable of building anything. No, MatPat, no, that's a bad theory. Bad MatPat, bad theory. All joking aside though, I think what Jeb means here is that the villagers don't have arms he means they don't have armaments. They don't have weapons with which to defend themselves. I hope so. Those things being just weird, meaty loops on their fronts is just a weird, weird thought. No, what I want to start with here is the Studio Ghibli reference. Jeb specifically calls out the 1986 animated film Castle in the Sky as a key inspiration for the golems. And after watching the movie, you can immediately see how. In the movie, there are these giant robots with distinctively long arms, very similar to the robotic long arm design of the Minecraft golem. But the similarity are more than just visual. In the movie, the robot has an iconic moment where he offers a small, delicate flower to a little girl, which is the exact same thing that the iron golems do when they offer poppy flowers to the villagers. So already, you can see that we have some visual similarities, some behavioral similarities, but the most interesting comparisons and the ones with implications for Minecraft's lore actually happen when you look at the story of the movie. The movie revolves around a legendary floating castle built by a long-forgotten ancient civilization. And not just any ancient civilization, but one that had highly advanced technology far beyond what the surface dwellers have in the movie's modern times. The robots are one such advanced creation, protecting the innocent creatures of the castle, now mostly deactivated and only being called to action when the civilization or innocents on board are being attacked. We join a young girl who comes to learn that 
she is a descendant of this long forgotten race. As she explores the castle, we learn, along with her, that the castle's power seems to stem from one giant magical blue crystal in the center. Though we're never told why the castle is abandoned, early drafts of the movie said that the civilization became dependent on their technology. So dependent that they became physically weak. When a disease breaks out, it kills most of the population and results in them having to abandon the city. Oh yeah, and there's also a lot of mining in the movie, as well as cube-shaped blocks. I mean, there's more to the actual plot than that, but that's the bulk of what's important to today's theory. And honestly, a lot of that summary sounded pretty darn similar to what we've been seeing in Minecraft. An ancient race with advanced technologies is forced to abandon their creations when some mysterious tragedy hits. This ancient civilization has some connection with magical blue crystals, which in Minecraft would be lapis lazuli, which we've been seeing playing a more and more important role in these theories. In both the movie and in Minecraft, we would presumably be in the shoes of a descendant of this ancient race of people. And lastly, we're presented with giant robots with long arms that were built as a defense mechanism, but lie dormant until members of the ancient civilization return or innocent lives are put at risk. And let me just focus on that last part for a minute, because the way that the iron golems seem to spontaneously spawn doesn't make much sense if you assume that they're just being built every so often whenever enough villagers are gathered together. But it makes a lot more sense if you assume that these iron golems were constructed ages ago and are somehow now being awakened or reactivated in the presence of the villagers. If this were indeed true, the golems would be a defensive measure built by the ancient race and waiting to be called action. But then how do we explain this? Going back to that Jeb quote from earlier, we made the iron golems look like the villagers because obviously the villagers would create a golem which would resemble themselves. This implies, no, this outright says that the iron golems were made by the villagers and not the builders. And just to be clear, the villagers and builders aren't one and the same. For one thing, the villagers aren't capable of using weapons or defending themselves. We already went through that whole arms debacle earlier this episode. But we know from the fact that weapons are among the loot that you can obtain in containers in the overworld that some ancient race at some point built and used them. And it wasn't the villagers, so it had to be someone. So how do we reconcile this apparent difference? Do we just say that Jeb is wrong? I don't think so. You see, it starts to make sense if we assume that the villagers and the builders were once one and the same. Back in ancient history at a time that the iron golems were built. So I'd like to tell you a story that I think explains how the iron golems happened and how the paths of the builders diverge from the paths of the villagers. A story that explains why one group continues to exist in the overworld while the other has seemingly vanished. Admittedly, this is getting into game speculation rather than just game theory, but I think it offers some ideas for all of us to chew on as it regards to the lore. Consider the following. Long, long ago, there was no distinction between villagers and builders. As a civilization, they evolved and progressed, as you would expect builders to, based on everything we know about Steve. They started with basic crafting, creating tools to better interact with their environments, basic weapons to deal with the mobs that they encountered, and eventually progressed to the point where they could begin building homes for themselves. As we've talked about in past theories, they became obsessed with progress, testing the limits of their ingenuity. They colonized land, sea, desert, jungle. When they conquered all parts of the overworld, they needed something more. They started to explore the nether. Obsessed with progress, they even experimented with giving life, eventually giving rise to automatons, the iron golems that we see today. And the iron golems were game changers. While the builders' existence had previously been nomadic by necessity, fleeing and leaving behind their houses to start new ones whenever they were pursued by a threat too powerful to take on directly, the iron golems were more powerful than all other overworld mobs. Not only could the builders now stay in one place and build villages, it was no longer necessary for them to carry weapons everywhere in order to defend themselves. After all, why waste the time to make a weapon and learning how to use it when you have a super strong golem to defend you with punches that can inflict way more damage than your sword ever could? Fighting became less necessary, and so the villagers no longer taught themselves how to fight. This was the start of a divide within the community. Certain people saw building only as a means to an end. You encounter an enemy, so you build a weapon to defeat it. You need a place to live, so you build a house. As the old saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention, and once they had built up a sustainable life for themselves, complete with golem protectors, the need to continue to invent was just gone. These people were content to simply live with the level of technology that they had. But not everyone was content and willing to stay complacent. Others longed to continue striving further, to continue to build and invent and discover new technologies just for the sake of discovery, or for the sake of giving them the tools to protect against threats they might not even know about yet. And it was here that the paths of the two groups diverged. One civilization suddenly became two. As some stayed behind in the villages to maintain a simple life as villagers, 
villagers, others went out, looking to explore the limits of human potential, forever looking to build the next great thing. Over the generations, the villager community, complacent in their livelihood, would grow to forget the secrets of building. Those skills would eventually be replaced with local trades, farming, masonry, butchery, baking. Meanwhile, not content with building mere simulations of life with the robotic iron golems, the builder society pressed onward, pushing their limits even further, conducting experiments that, as we discussed in a previous theory, would eventually result in the creation of the Wither. And it was here that their catastrophe struck. Much like the civilization in Castle in the Sky, the Builder Society had created their own worst enemy, a foe even more powerful than their most powerful Iron Golem protectors. The Builders were doomed by their hubris, forced to flee to the end, eventually evolving to become the Endermen. And the complacent villagers would continue to stagnate, living on to this very day certainly, but having long forgotten the building skills that they once had. Though they don't possess the ability to build those iron golems themselves anymore, they nonetheless benefit from the foresight of their ancestors, who built legions of the robots back in the day as a defense system, programmed to protect them and attack any who threatened them. Those iron robots still walk the earth to this day, following the instructions that they were programmed with all those eons ago. While well, the people that had the drive and ingenuity to create them in the first place were eventually undone by their own pride. It can be easy to look at the Minecraft villagers and wonder why it is that they're able to survive despite the fact that they seem to be defenseless and incapable of basic building. But that is the very thing that's allowed them to live to this day. They lacked the drive and ingenuity of their forefathers, but that protected them from falling victim to their own creations, allowing them to survive the more grisly fate that befell the builders who weren't content with the simple life of a villager. Anyway, like I said, it is a lot of speculation, a fun personal headcanon to try and connect some of these dots. But regardless, it's very interesting to me that Jeb would outright say that the villagers built the golems despite us never seeing them build anything ever in the games. The only way for that to be true is for the villagers to somehow forget the skills over the gen-